The topic of this PowerPoint is Indian nations and their power and presence in early colonial America. When thinking about this time period, we want to think about how Indian nations altered the agendas as well as the ambitions of European powers at this time period. So in looking at that, we want to think about what are the things that Indian nations did what sort of things did they attempt to do in order to maintain their own power in this circumstance? So when thinking about the agendas and ambitions, we want to lay out what those agendas and ambitions were for European powers at this time. Clearly, one of their biggest agendas was to acquire land. In acquiring land, they would acquire additional political power, because they would have the capacity to um, gain more economic power wherever they were to end up as a result of the additional acquisition of land. For other Europeans, however, they came solely because they were seeking religious freedom. So we can see that the major things that Europeans wanted to do is acquire additional political power as well as religious freedom. And from that political power, Many of them wanted the additional economic gain that they could get from acquiring land. So the question is, how, in all of this, did Indian nations limit and shape the powers and ambitions of European colonial powers at this time? So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the five different things I have listed here as a way to think about what Europeans and Indian people did in their interactions and how the actions of Indian people actually limited and shaped the ambitions of European powers at this time. So we've talked about briefly the revolts of Indian people during this time. So one of the ways that Indian people over time would basically limit the power of different European powers was to revolt against what was happening. So we see this happening in two separate contexts during this time period. The first in the East with King Philip's War, and the second in the West with the Pueblo Revolt. Both of them happen at similar time periods, but both of them happen kind of as a result of similar circumstances. Both Indian nations and European powers had basically lived and worked together peacefully in some capacity for roughly 100 years. In the instance of King Philip, what happened was the Wampanoag had actually helped the Europeans, as we saw in the document we read this week. They helped them learn how to farm. They helped them work with other Indian tribes. And as time wore on, what they saw, the Wampanoag, is that the British wanted more and more. They wanted more land, they wanted um, Indian people to convert to their form of religion. And as we read about King Philip's War, what you learn is it was kind of a, a series of events that occurred to result in King Philip's War. It's 14 months of conflict, noted as one of the bloodiest wars in early colonial America. But what it does ultimately, and what is sort of sad to read about is that it, it does stop expansion, but as a result of that war, there are also a lot of deaths. So in that conflict, we see a divide between the Wampanoag people. Um, some people decide to fight. Other people believe that it's not a good idea to fight. Among those people who decide not to fight are some of the Christian Indians, so the people who have adopted the religious practices of the European people. In the case of the Pueblo Revolt, what happens is that, as we read about, the Pueblo people have been um, servants as well as been um, indoctrinated into the religious practices of the Spaniards. During the 150 years where they basically served the Spanish, giving them pieces of their land as well as um, tribute, which was by way of their agricultural goods that they raised, um, they eventually revolted over that time period. And because of 
reasons that are not completely clear, some of which um, leading up to the Pueblo Revolt were things like them having prosecuted um, some religious leaders within the Pueblo people. So what we read about is that just like in King Philip's War, some people decide that the revolt is a good idea, other people decide it's not a good idea. You read in the document that people thought of Pope as having worked with the devil, and um, here some of the Indians that decide not to revolt are people who have adopted the religious practices of the Spaniards. So the end result of this revolt, however, much like King Philip's War, is kind of the end of the rule of the European power. So for 12 years, the Pueblo once again become independent and they rule themselves. So another way that Indian nations limited the power of the Europeans who sought to gain more economic independence, which would result in more political control, is early on they taught Europeans how to farm and to hunt on the land. Indian nations were closely tied to the land. They had strong understanding of what the land um, needed how to interact with the land, how to pay tribute to the land through their religious practices. And they took it upon themselves to actually teach Europeans how to farm and how to hunt the land. So within the context of this economic relationship, Indian nations also started to gain economic power. They entered into the European system where there was trade, trade for fur, trade for goods. During this time, they acquired, as we learn about in the chapter, horses as well as guns. This allows them to become part of this economic system where they are not simply the ones teaching, but they are also trading to be a part of the economic system. One thing they eventually start to trade, as well as acquire, so that they can continue to build their economic system, is they start to acquire captives to be able to rebuild their population, which has been devastated by disease. And they also become a part of the economic system by acquiring slaves, slaves from other tribes, slaves from Spanish, so that they can sell and trade to acquire more goods. So another thing that Indian nations do at this time is that they demand cultural awareness. They demand that Europeans work in a way with them that they are culturally aware and they are people who practice the cultural beliefs of the native tribe in order to exchange goods with them, in order to talk with them about political issues. So in order to work with native tribes, in many cases, what we learn about in the chapter is that tribes believe in gift giving as a part of kind of a, a way to basically build a strong diplomacy with a group of people or to maintain that diplomacy. Another way to maintain diplomacy in some tribes was by smoking a peace pipe even before having a conversation. So these cultural practices that were necessary and built within the tribe were demanded by the tribe to be followed by European nations. We also see other examples of cultural awareness and of cultural um, of tribes being requiring Europeans to practice cultural awareness in the wampum belt. So the wampum belt was a way that Iroquois people recorded um, basically agreements that they would make with European nations, and these were utilized in conversations with U European nations. They are still in existence today, and they record what the Iroquois understood to be the agreement between themselves and European nations. Finally, one thing that we also learn about is that Europeans definitely did not think of women as leaders back then. But Iroquois, well, one good example of the women having a lot of power over the not only politics, but the economy of the tribe. So the Iroquois demanded that Europeans interacted or acknowledged that women had that power within their tribe. Finally, Indian people 
played a large role in shaping or altering the agenda of European nations by the political power that they held based on their own cultural traditions. So this political power is, I would say, exemplified in the Iroquois Confederacy. The Iroquois Confederacy was a very strong confederacy of tribes that held strongly onto the power that they had for a long duration of time. They were able to ally themselves with other tribes. They were able to work with European nations in order to keep their land. And they were certainly represented within those early political discussions within European nations. We also see another example of the strong political power that Native people had in the fight of the Seven Years' War. There is a, a lot of information about how Native people in the Seven Years' War played the British against the French, and as a result of this, were able to keep hold and prolong the movement of Europeans into the West. The Ohio Valley was basically the place where Europeans wanted to move so that they could come into the West and move into the West to acquire additional land. Indian people in their actions were able to, as I mentioned, prolong that from happening. And because of that political power altered the agenda of Europeans during this time. So just a quick review, looking back at what Indian people did to basically limit as well as alter and shape the ambitions of European people during this time. First, they were able to successfully make Europeans follow some of their cultural practices, um, certainly altering what Europeans would have liked to have done, but allowing them to be a player in early colonial America. They additionally revolted, um, showing Europeans that they were not going to just sit back and simply be a part of what was ever happening, but um, in no uncertain terms allowed Europeans to know uh, where their line was and not to cross that. In addition, they were also large players in the politics of early colonial America and um, were able to develop their own ideas in early colonial America about how things would play out. So in looking at early colonial America, think about, as you review these chapters for the exam, how Indian people in their actions were able to be players in early America and were able to alter those initial ambitions of Europeans, which was to come in, take hold of the land, to maintain political power, and in many cases, propagate their own religious ideas. What did Indian people do to prevent that, to alter that, to shape it, and to put their own stamp on early America and what happened in early America?